All right, hello my friends, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to part four of my ultimate item tier list for Brotato. This is the very last part, and we are going to finish off with the legendary items. These are going to be incredibly powerful build-defining items that are going to either give you an enormous bonus or, correspondingly, enormous downsides if you buy the wrong ones. They're very high risk because they cost a lot, but also, obviously, extremely high reward. So I think it's really important to understand which ones you want to buy and which ones you don't. Just a couple quick things before we get started. I have actually on consultation with people in the comments, and after trying them out for myself, I want to move two items a little bit higher up. The first of these is the trophy, which I'm going to put into A tier, and the second is the tentacle, which I'm also putting into A tier. I think these are both really good if you have crit chance, the trophy, I should have known better than to put an economy item so low, it turns out it's just worth a lot of money if you're killing stuff with crits, and the tentacle similarly is worth a lot of healing. All right, with that out of the way, let me just quickly explain the tiers again, if you're just joining us, or just to remind everyone how these work. So, S tier items you will pretty much always pick whenever you see them, with very few exceptions. A tier items you're going to pick anytime you actually use the stats the item provides, because the downsides are so minimal. B tier items, you have real downsides, but correspondingly strong upsides, and so you will have to judge based on whether it's a stat you actually want or whether it's too dangerous for you to take, uh, whether to take this item or not. C tier items are build filler. They're typically a little weaker than the other items just in terms of raw stats or have very significant downsides. Um, they might provide small benefits for the cost. You can buy them, but they are typically going to be things you will prioritize lower than other items. D tier items are items that are only useful for very specific characters or very narrow builds, so you usually will be safe to ignore them, and F tier items you should pretty much never buy on any character. Alright, without further ado, let's get into the tier 4 red items, the legendary items. I will be reading out what the items do, uh, but if you want to follow along, you can just go to the wiki and sort by rarity, that will let you follow along with the text of the items in front of you as well. First up, the anvil. So every time you enter a shop with the anvil, a random item in your in random weapon in your inventory is upgraded to level. If you already have six legendary weapons in your inventory, or only one if you're the one arm, twelve if you're the multitasker, and so on. Uh, so if an item can't be upgraded, you get two armor instead. This is an enormously powerful effect, incredible for your economy, um, really good in endless mode. It's also worth noting because you just keep gaining armor forever. Uh, two armor is worth quite a lot just by itself, and of course weapon upgrades can be worth hundreds of credits, even thousands of materials with some of the higher tier weapons. This can upgrade things like obliterators or nuclear launchers that you're likely to only ever find the level 3 version of and not be able to upgrade otherwise. Incredible item, you should buy it whenever you see it, unless it's like the very last wave. Big arms. 12 melee damage and 6 range damage for minus 1 armor and minus 5% speed. I think this is at best a C tier item. The bonuses are pretty low, but the bonuses are pretty good, but low for the amount of money that you're going to be spending on this item at this point in the game. And this one's just solid math. Minus speed is pretty bad. Typically, it's one of the worst penalties an item can have, and you will know if you need the melee damage or ranged damage enough to pick this, but usually you're going to be better off just rolling to get that damage from more efficient items. Bloody Hand gives you plus 12% lifesteal and plus 2% damage for every 1% lifesteal you have, but you take 1 damage every second while you have it equipped. Uh, this item is ridiculous. This is probably the single best item in the game to have in your inventory. Um, it will mitigate the damage immediately just with the lifesteal. It gives you 24% damage as well just by itself, scaling additionally with your lifesteal. This solves all your healing problems on its own. This item is incredible and you should buy it every time. Cape gives you plus 5% lifesteal, plus 20% dodge for minus 2 melee, minus 1 ranged, minus 1 elemental damage. So the downsides barely exist and the upsides are huge. Um, if you're already dodge capped, you might not want this item, but otherwise I think this is just another solid S tier item. Incredible value for the cost and provides a ton of stats that you really want. 
Diploma gives you 10 engineering and 20% XP gain for minus 3 max HP. Very few downsides, but high upsides. If you're an engineering build, obviously you'll always buy it. If you're not an engineering build, you'll never buy it. Estes Couch gives you 2 HP regeneration for every permanent plus uh, minus 1% speed you have, 5 max HP, and minus 15% speed. So it's going to give you 30 HP regeneration if your speed is 0, um, but less if your speed is currently positive when you buy the item. This item is a trap. It's very bad. Uh, the HP regeneration is never going to make up for the additional hits you'll take from reducing your speed. So only on maybe very specific characters can buy it. Even then, I can't really imagine any characters that really want minus 15% speed. This item goes straight into F tier. <laughs> the Exoskeleton. Uh, plus 5 armor, plus 5% crit chance, plus 5 engineering, plus 5 percent speed for minus two HP regeneration, minus two percent lifesteal. Five armor by itself would make this item pretty good, and five armor and five speed means that this item is just, I think, really solid overall. If you desperately need the healing, maybe you won't take it, so I am tempted to put it in A tier, but I think it is very high in A tier. So we're going to leave it there, but I think overall Exoskeleton is, is really good, and you should grab it more or less whenever you see it. All right, explosive shells. This gives you plus 60% explosive damage, plus 15% explosion size, and minus 15% damage. You need to win a run with Artificer to unlock it. Um, if you're building explosion damage, obviously this is really good. Otherwise, it's not. I think this item is overall like quite good just because it works very well with what you have, and explosion damage and explosion size are both incredibly powerful effects. If you have any explosive weaponry at all, um, you're going to buy explosive shells. It also works with the next item on the list, the explosive turret, uh, and any other forms of explosions you might have, like landmines or natural explosions from your character. These are things that can make this item ex especially powerful. Explosive turret... Um, it's the weakest of the turrets, I suppose, uh, after the incendiary turret, um, but still really good if you're building engineering. And the reason it's weakest isn't because it's bad, but just because it's more expensive. Overall, though, if you're building any engineering, you're going to buy explosive turret. It also has some other benefits, like it can spread fire pretty far. It can slow enemies if you happen to have the ugly tooth. It does a lot of extra stuff, but just like every other engineering turret. Overall, though, I think you're going to want like normal turrets and laser turrets ahead of this, but you'll still buy it every time you see it if you're in an engineering build. Extra Stomach. This one is gives you plus one max HP when picking up a consumable while at maximum health. Um, this is, I would say, very, very good if you get it like early. And still pretty good if you get it late. If it's very late in the wave, you might not grab it, though. So I'm going to put it in B tier just because it's expensive. Maybe your health is already fine and you don't need it. Um, this is obviously really good for Endless because you're going to just get 10, X, 10 health per wave out of it forever. But for winning level 20, maybe you only get, like, 12 health out of it, in which case maybe it's not worth buying. Um, or if you're a character that is consistently taking damage, if you already have Bloody Hand or uh, Blood Donation, then it probably doesn't work for you because you're going to be at low health. What you want to do with this item, incidentally, is leave all of the consumables on the ground rather than picking them up, which means it slight works slightly worse with consumable builds because you want to pick them up all at the end rather than while you are during the wave, because that will mean a higher percentage of them are picked up while you're at full health. Focus gives you 30% damage and minus 3% attack speed for every different weapon you have. Um, usually this is going to be 30% damage for minus 3% attack speed, which is a great ratio. Uh, if you have multiple different weapons, then it's going to be worse. I think this is another B tier weapon, because in general it's going to be pretty good value, but it's also very expensive, and you have to really weigh the downsides of these tier 4 weapons. One of the major downsides is just that they cost a ton of materials, so there are going to be times when you aren't going to buy it. Giant Belt. 
Critical hit steal 10% of an enemy's current health as bonus damage, 1% for bosses and elites. Obviously for any critical hit build this is incredible, it's gonna take elites down super fast, so A tier if you're critical hits. Gnome, plus 10 melee, plus 10 elemental, minus 20 range, and minus 20% pickup range. So Gnome is kind of an interesting one. It gives you uh, decent stats if you're an elemental build, although it's rarer to be an elemental build than to be any other form of build, of course. Um, worse stats if you are a melee build. The minus 20 range and minus 20% pickup range aren't huge penalties. Minus pickup range isn't uh, is more of a penalty than minus range. Minus 20 range is quite avoidable or you can mitigate it with only one level up or like a, a single glasses or something will help you just fix that problem even if it ever becomes a problem and usually most characters don't mind losing range minus 20 percent pickup range can screw up your consumable healing which can cause some real problems for you but overall i think this is a really good item if you use either of the stats you're probably going to buy it it has very minimal downsides and gives you a big pile of stats, and if you're an elemental build, of course, it's incredible. Grind's Magical Leaf. So Grind's Magical Leaf, at the end of every wave, it gives you 3 max HP, 1 HP regeneration, and 1% lifesteal. So 1% lifesteal is the biggest of these bonuses. It's the one that, um, like, normally you would pay the same amount for 3 HP, 2 regeneration, or 1 lifesteal. So the fact that you're paying for, you're getting one life steal and all of these other items all together is really nice. Um, and overall, it's only positives. If you are within like two waves of the end, you might not grab it. But otherwise, I think you're going to grab it anytime you see it before wave like 16 or so. So I'm going to put this in S tier, but obviously if it's wave 18, it may not be worth it. Um, that being said, pretty much anytime you see it early, you're going to grab it. And so it goes along with like fertilizer and stuff like that, that you might skip at the very end of the game, but are close enough to S tier or like it, you will do better if you think of these items as items you should just always buy when you see them. Heavy Bullets. This gives you 5 ranged damage, 10% damage, 10 range, for minus 5% attack speed and minus 5% crit chance. Uh, these are pretty good. I mean, they're going to increase your damage most of the time if you are ranged. Minus attack speed and minus crit chance is a little worse. So I think I'm going to put these in B tier just because there are times when attack speed or crit chance are going to be your limiting factor rather than flat damage or percent damage, and those times you won't want to buy it. There, The ratio is not amazing compared to the downsides, so it's, it's a good item, but not an incredible item, I would say. Next up, we have the jetpack. So the jetpack gives you 15% speed, 10% dodge for minus 5 max HP, minus 1 armor. Um, jetpack is great, obviously. You, if you're dodge capped already, you won't buy it, but any other time you're going to buy it, 15% speed is an incredible bonus, lets you really dodge enemies, and also buy some of the powerful items that decrease your speed. Big jetpack fan. And minus 5 max HP, not a huge deal at this point in the game, probably, although you'll know if it is. Mammoth gives you 20 melee damage, 5 HP regeneration, for minus 8% damage and minus 3% speed. Uh, minus 8% damage is actually a lot at this point in the game, so I'm going to put this in B tier, even though 20 melee damage is huge. Mammoth is obviously a lot of damage, but the minus 8% can really be a downside. Um, so you have to really weigh which is your limiting factor. I think it's rare that you're not going to take this on melee characters, but happens often enough that I'm not going to put it in A tier uh, by itself. Medkit. 10 HP regeneration, and you get plus 2 HP regeneration every 5 seconds until the end of the wave for minus 10 luck. Uh, if you need healing, this is incredible. If you don't need healing, it's fine. I think this is an A tier item. There are some characters that are already totally set on healing or need other stats better that are not going to grab it, but for the most part, everybody's going to pick this up. It's very similar to Fairy, I think, in that it will 
solve all of your healing problems by itself, but I'm not going to put it in S tier because it will come later and be more expensive than Fairy, so it, it has basically the same effect as a level 3 item as a level 4 item, so that's why it's slightly worse. Night Vision Goggles give you 15% crit chance and 50 range for minus 3 max HP, nine, minus 1 armor. Uh, this is a, an enormous bonus. I mean, 15% crit chance is going to make most of your attacks crit by the time you are getting this. You probably have like 20% already just sort of naturally from picking it up, I think. And the downsides are quite minimal, so if you care about crit chance at all, or just want to increase your damage, crit chance is also usually the last damage type that you're going to buy. Typically, you'll prioritize flat damage, and then you'll prioritize percentage damage, and then you'll prioritize, uh, sorry, you'll prioritize attack speed, and then flat damage, and then percent damage, and then crit chance in order of increasing your damage. So by the time this item shows up, you're very likely to need only crit chance as the thing that increases your damage the most. So overall, I think night vision goggles is going to serve you very well. The octopus gives you 12 maximum HP, 5 HP regeneration, and 3% life steal. One thing I like about this octopus is that it's from the same asset pack that they use for super auto pets, so you'll recognize the octopus from there as well. <laughs> Uh, most of these potato items are hand-drawn, but this one, I think, is, is from an asset pack, which is kind of funny. Uh, so it gives, yeah, 12 max HP, 5 HP regeneration, 3% lifesteal for minus 8% crit chance. Again, this is a really solid pile of stats for the cost. It's going to be really nice. Minus 8% crit chance at this point in the game is a little worse, but this will by itself often solve all of your healing problems just with the little bits of extra healing you get, and 12 max HP is a lot, so we're putting that in A tier. Panda gives you 12 max HP, 25 luck, minus 5% damage. I think this is a C tier item. Uh, often you will have plenty of luck at this point and don't really need to have increased luck. If you are a consumable healing character, maybe you will want it, and if you aren't, then you won't, probably. Um, 12 max HP is still pretty good, but minus 5% damage is a real downside, not the biggest one, but it's one you do have to pay attention to. So we're going to put this in C tier because it's very expensive for what you get. Potato is, of course, an S tier item. It's just a big pile of stats. It gives you 3 HP, 2 regeneration, 1 life steal, 5 damage, 5 attack speed, 3 speed, 3 dodge, 1 armor, and 5 luck. Every character is going to have something they want from here, and most characters will want many of these things. Um, you're just going to grab this every time you see it. It's too many stats to pass up. Regeneration Potion. This is HP regen is doubled while you have less than 50% health and 3 HP regen. I think this is obviously good if you're going a regeneration build, but maybe you have like full regeneration at that point. I think this is another C tier item. It doesn't solve your healing problems by itself because it needs a lot of healing already in order to have any effect. Um, and by the time you have 20 or 30 HP regeneration, does doubling it when you're at half health really help? Like it does, but not tremendously. So um, whether you want this depends on whether you really need that burst of healing. Retro Mation's Hoodie. This gives you 2% attack speed for every 1% dodge you have, minus 80 range. Minus 80 range is an amount of range loss that actually does matter. Um, unlike... Almost every other item I have said, don't worry about losing range, it, it won't matter. I have actually recorded a video for the Brawler where I talk about that a little bit as well, so you can look forward to that coming up sometime soon. Um, that losing range is not a tremendous deal because you can really mitigate it through playstyle or just by buying more range. But 80 range does actually cost you a lot if you are a ranged build specifically. Um, on the other hand, 2% attack speed for every dodge you have. This can be 120% attack speed on a lot of characters, so if you have a decent amount of dodge, this is an insane item. Um, if you don't have a decent amount of dodge, it's not. We're going to put it in B tier, although recognizing that it is extremely powerful, so if you can make use of the upside, you will probably want to buy this item. 
Ricochet gives your projectiles plus one bounce for minus 25% damage. Obviously, bouncing projectiles is really, really important uh, for any kind of ranged build. So if you are ranged, you're going to buy this every time you see it. It basically doubles all your damage in exchange for minus 25% damage. So it's a huge DPS increase. Great item. Robot Arm gives you 6 armor and 6 engineering for minus 2 HP regen and minus 2 lifesteal. So this is similar to a couple other items that we saw already. So the, um, which was it? The exoskeleton, which gives you 5 armor and 5 engineering, but also gives you 5 speed and 5 crit chance for exactly the same downsides. Uh, so the robot arm is definitely worse than that, because you only get one more armor and one more engineering, which means you actually have to really want the engineering for this. And even then, um, sometimes the healing is pretty important to your build. So I'm going to put it in B tier, because it's still a decent amount of stats for the price, but this is one where you, you have to recognize that it is worse than the exoskeleton because it basically does the same thing but with fewer stats that most characters care about. Sifty's Relic, Sift's Relic, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. 100% chance to instantly attract a material when it's dropped. Uh, this item is one that I love, but it's pretty bad. Like, I buy this item way, way more than I should. I think this is a D tier item because it mostly is useful for the lucky and stuff like that. Um, or if you have a lot of baby elephants and stuff, you're going to get those materials anyways in the next wave. You So this will usually get you like 40 materials or something over the course of the game that you wouldn't otherwise pick up. It means you get this money a little earlier, which is nice if you are one of the characters that scales off of some sort of compound interest, like the streamer or the saver or something. But overall, it's an item that is mostly quality of life and it's very satisfying to use, but not very strong. So it should be D tier. I will say I buy this item a lot and I wouldn't fault you for doing so because it is really awesome to watch the materials zip across the map to you. But most of the time you're going to be better off without this item that doesn't contribute to your wave clear or your damage or anything. Spider gives you plus 12% damage, plus 6% attack speed for every different weapon you have, and you lose 3 dodge and 5 harvesting. So this item is pretty good if, obviously, you have multiple different items. If you have 6% if you have uh, six different weapons, this is 36% attack speed, which is obviously a really solid boost. If you, like most characters, only have one item, this is still okay. 12% damage and 6% attack speed for some moderate downsides is buyable, but not one that I would go out of my way to buy. I'm going to put this in C tier because a lot of characters will have like one different item. Maybe they'll have picked up a, an obliterator or a nuclear launcher or a chain gun or something um, and have like a 5-1 split on their weapons. Maybe you're a mage and have five tasers and a flamethrower, that kind of thing, at which point it becomes much more worth considering. But if you only have one kind of weapon, you're probably passing on spider. Torture gives you 15 max HP and you restore 4 HP per second. You can't heal any other way. If you need healing, like if you don't already have way more healing than this provides, this completely solves your healing by itself. I'm putting it in B tier because you're never taking it if it's going to decrease your healing, but 15 HP is a lot. 4 HP per second is tons. One thing to keep in mind about this torture, though, is that it ticks 4 HP per second, not one every quarter of a second. So it's slightly worse than having that amount of HP regeneration because you, you get the HP in instances rather than installments um, in, in larger quanta, I guess. So you need to be a little careful if the 3 HP would have saved you and then you take a damage right before your healing instance, you can die. This doesn't matter a ton, but it's something just to keep in mind about the item. Overall, really good if you need the healing, um, and if you don't, you probably won't take it, but maybe you still will just for, for 15 max HP. And finally, the Wolf Helmet. You get 10 elemental damage and 20 luck for minus 5 engineering. I guess this is technically an A tier item, because if you're an elemental build, you're always buying it. Most of the time, you're going to pass on this. It has basically no downsides, though, so... 
Sometimes you'll even take it if you just want 20 luck and aren't in an engineering build. Obviously, engineering builds are never taking it, but um, if you get it for free and are like a ranged or melee build, maybe you'll just grab it. And if you're an elemental build, of course, you always grab it because it's 10 elemental damage. So it's worth keeping that in mind. All right, so that is every single item in Brotato ranked. I hope you guys have enjoyed this look into the process. Um, as always, you can leave comments and let me know if I got something wrong. I'm going to just zoom out a little bit. We can get this whole thing on one screen. And I will talk a little bit about what I think the lessons of this tier list are. So first up, economy is incredibly good. You'll notice what percentage of the S tier items are economy items. Economy items tend to pay for themselves very quickly in this game. This game, often the harder characters are hard because they struggle with their economy. So buying harvesting or trees or something like that, gentle aliens like additional enemies, can really mitigate the major downsides of some of the most difficult characters in the game. Secondly, some items are really worth unlocking. I'm going to do a video on this specifically, but for example, the whetstone or the potato, that type of item is really worth playing those characters to win with so that you unlock those items and have them available. The fin as well, have them available for your characters because they vastly increase the quality of your shop pool if those items are available. In particular, the whetstone I think is worth mentioning because it makes healing through lifesteal way more viable. You get four lifesteal, which is an incredible rate for a very cheap item with almost no downside. In fact, losing knockback is often an upside. So uh, whetstone, I think, is quietly one of the best items in the game to have available in your shop even though I didn't put it in S tier because there are times you won't buy it if you're not going a lifesteal build. It is very important to have this item in your shop and you should try to unlock it. Another thing is losing speed is really bad. You'll notice that so many of the items near the bottom of the, of the tier list are there because they decrease your speed. Um, increasing your speed is good, but losing speed is much worse than increasing speed is good. Uh, if that makes sense, because having speed below 100 is much more punishing than having speed above 100 is helpful. And finally, um, a lot of items are just too expensive for what they give you, so you should be paying attention to what the price of the item is, as well as just the effects of the item. This is something that I'm a little bit guilty of as well, just in general. Um, it's not just comparing the positives and negatives, you also have to compare the opportunity cost of spending that many materials and maybe locking it in the shop, maybe like rolling past it, that kind of thing. Anyways, I hope this has been very helpful to you, my friends, and as always, if you've enjoyed the video, please feel free to comment, let me know if you would place anything differently from this tier list, and I will catch you next time. Cheers, my friends, and GG.